fees, fines, and petty law enforcement. Little ticky-tack violations can pile up quickly and are enough to drive even the most civic-minded citizens crazy. Radical thinkers spanning the political spectrum, from Marx to Rothbard, have described the state as a parasite, surviving off the lifeblood of productive, tax-paying citizens. But what happens when the parasite gets too big? Whether it's a once-great city on the brink of bankruptcy, a suburb racked with racial tension between police and the citizens they're supposed to protect, or a town run by literal crooks. When the pickings get slim, governments tend to find more creative ways to raise money. These are America's three most fee-ridden cities. With the fees that they charge for the appliance license, I mean, it's just kind of ridiculous. Oh, they're just targeting really the whole city. They're not doing their jobs out here. Detroit is our number three most fee-ridden city. Shortly after declaring the largest municipal bankruptcy in history, Detroit's government started cooking up all sorts of revenue-generating schemes, such as doubling expired parking meter fines. Unfortunately, about half the meters in Detroit are broken, and the city can't afford to fix them, making Detroit one of the few cities that actually loses money on parking enforcement. They don't fix the meters, but if you're parked there, you get a ticket. But Detroit's most outrageous scheme is called Operation Compliance, an initiative to bring all of the city's small businesses up to code with costly permitting. It kicked off with the stated goal to shut down 20 non-compliant businesses a week. And I know they need money, but what about the people that's been here? I've been here 15 years. To be cleaning up some of these vacant lots out here and cutting some of the grass throughout the city. Taking our tax dollars, clean it up. Ferguson, Missouri is our number two most fee-ridden city. They are writing tickets so fast to some of these municipalities now. People get a ticket one day. They don't have a court date until January. When you get pulled over for like a tail light, for example, you cringe because of the past. This city grabbed headlines after local police rolled out in full military garb against protesters in the wake of the fatal shooting of teenager Michael Brown. But tension between the police and citizens here runs deep, and in no small part because of a pattern of persistent, petty law enforcement by the officers. And it's not just Ferguson. The Washington Post uncovered similar law enforcement in other tiny suburbs just outside of St. Louis, going so far as to call them little fiefdoms. And if you don't pay the fines, the nightmare is just beginning. They'll give person a, a four or five hundred dollar fine. They'll let the attorney know three weeks until they can pay the fine. And if they don't pay all of it, then they want to lock them up. One local courthouse issued five arrest warrants per citizen, many of them for delinquent payments. Bell, California is our number one most fee-ridden city. They have a, um, like a monopoly and they want to take control of the city. This is a bunch of crooks. This small California town just south of Los Angeles rose up against the local government whose officials were literally robbing them and paying themselves some of the most lucrative government salaries in the nation. They're giving the tickets to people who park out there so they can make revenue. We have very, a very predatory government. Bell residents successfully recalled the entire city council, the mayor, and removed city manager Robert Rizzo, who paid himself $1.5 million a year in salary and benefits in a community with a per capita household income of about $25,000. It's just disgusting what they're doing with our money. It's all going into their pockets and they don't care about the community, a working class community. Rizzo and his assistant Angela Spaccia are locked up in federal prison, but the residents of Bell are still on the hook for the $137 million in debt left behind. Locals call it the Rizzo tax. They're doing the American thing. The government isn't working for them, and so they're taking charge and they're going to fix it themselves. Have you seen good, bad, or funny government action in your town? We're taking suggestions for our next episode of America's Most. And don't forget to subscribe.